Hi everyone, so we're going to be looking at substitution reaction of alkanes. So a substitution reaction is when you have one atom or a group of atoms that is being replaced by another. So you're just substituting something. You're replacing one atom or a group of atoms by another atom or another group of atoms. And alkanes undergo substitution reactions with halogens. So with Cl, uh, with chlorine, bromine, iodine, in the presence of strong sunlight or UV light. So only when there is sunlight or UV light that the substitution reaction happens. If there is no sunlight, if there's no UV light, there's not going to be any reaction. So in this reaction, one or more hydrogen atoms from the alkane is going to be replaced by the halogen atom. So if it's in the dark, there is no reaction because the UV light, the energy from the UV light is used to break the covalent bond in the chlorine molecules. And uh, when you have that UV light, it's going to cause homolytic bond fission. You will have to correct this. This has been wrongly written. So it's homolytic bond fission. If you still remember, we have already covered homolytic bond fission. Homolytic bond fission is when the covalent bond splits and it splits in an equal way, so in, e in an even way. So let's say I have two atoms, A and B, that are covalently bonded over here. What happens is during homolytic bond fission, each one is going to get one electron, like this. So this is homolytic bond fission, and you end up with radicals. Radicals meaning that you have a particle with unpaired electron. An unpaired electron, uh, a particle with an unpaired electron is called a radical or a free radical. And free radicals, because they have that unpaired electron, they want to pair it up as quick as possible. So they are very reactive particles. And another type of bond fission is called heterolytic bond fission. Heterolytic bond fission, one of the particles benefits from both electrons. So, for example, here, where you have heterolytic bond fission, so you're going to have A plus plus B minus. So, the uh, particle B is going to get both electrons. So uh, this one is going to be positively uh, charged and this one is negatively charged. So you have charged particles that are produced during heterolytic bond fission. So two types of bond fission, homolytic and heterolytic bond fission. Now, when we're talking about substitution reactions, in substitution reactions, you have homolytic bond fission that takes place. So the halogen is going to break. So for example, Cl-Cl bond is going to break in such a way that each chlorine, so if these are the pair of electrons shared, so each chlorine gets one electron. And these are radicals. These are called free radicals. And if you draw all the electrons pres uh, present in the outermost shell, this is how it's going to look like. So the chlorine has seven electrons in the outermost shell. So it's a free radical. And this is going to happen only in the presence of UV light, which is going to be able to break that bond. And this is actually the initiation step. Of the substitution reaction so it's the first step and during the first step you have the formation of free radicals and these free radicals because they have that unpaired electron here they will want to react to uh, any other kind of species as quick as possible so they are unstable and they will start a chain reaction so here you see initiation step is the first step of the free radical uh, substitution reaction. It starts with the formation of radicals 
and this step requires energy from uv light to break the uh, br br bond it could be any any radical any uh, halogen sorry so the bromine molecule undergoes homolytic bond fission to produce bromine radicals and this is the initiation step so you will have bromine reacting with uv light and this is going to give you bromine radicals so two bromine radicals so if the reaction revolves chlor involves chlorine it's going to be two chlorine radicals the next step is called the propagation step and during the propagation you're going to have the formation of other uh, free radicals so you're going to start to propagate the free radicals so these free radicals will react with the uh, alkane in question so in the propagation step we're going to have the propagation you're going to have the spreading of radicals so we'll start with the radical reacting with the alkane so the radical is br dot reacting with the alkane in this case it's methane you're going to have the formation of another radical so what will happen is that the bromine radical because it's highly reactive it will react with the hydrogen from the alkane so you're going to end up with hbr molecule plus you'll have the ch3 radical i show the dot here because that one unpaired electron is on the carbon so here you have the methyl radical the methyl radical will then react with chlorine molecule so this is a free radical free radicals will always react with a molecule it will never not react with another free radical in a propagation step so in the propagation step you will have the free radical reacting with a molecule so here this is a free radical and here this is a molecule the free radical produced ch3 radical is going to react with the chlorine molecule or the bromine molecule sorry in this case it's a bromine molecule and this is going to give you the bromo uh, bromomethane so ch3 br and then you have one br which is left this is going to be the br radical so this is called a propagation step because we start with one radical and produce another radical so one bromine radical can react with thousands of methane molecules and the propagation step usually have two parts so the first part is the free radical halogen reacting with the molecule then the free radical produced will react with the halogen again so drawing the dot and cross diagram for methyl radical so methyl radical is ch3 dot so you have free hydrogen and then one unpaired electron this is the methyl radical now the termination step like the name means termination it's going to end the reaction so the chain reaction stops so we have two radicals that will react with each other so there are many possible termination steps so you can take any two uh, radicals and react them together for example you have br radical and br radical you're going to end up with br2 you can also have br radical plus ch3 radical so ch3 br you could also have ch3 radicals reacting with a ch3 radical so you end up with c2h6 so for termination step you can include one equation two equation or more equations uh, of the termination step but you have to be careful that for termination step you need to have two radicals reacting with uh, each other and you end up with one molecule at the end